welcome to... Sorry, the fucking arm just squeaked. Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking to Myself. I'm your host, Jake Letizia. And this is a podcast where I look into a camera and talk to, and talk to myself. How's it going? How are you doing? Sorry. Sorry for the fucked up intro. I just bashed my tooth on a metal straw. God damn it. If you're watching the video of this podcast, you just saw it. I just bashed my fucking tooth, my big goddamn right front tooth. And that's not the first time I bashed myself with a metal straw this week. I also stabbed my eye with one. I stabbed my eye so hard with one that I thought maybe I might go blind. (laughs) I thought there's no way I won't fucking puncture some sort of... Uh, soft spot and not be able to see in a half hour. I really thought that I burst some blood vessels and that I was going to have to go to a doctor and they were going to be like, hey, what happened to you? And I was going to be like, wow, I was working from home and I was really excited playing Sekiro and I ran back to my desk and I and I accidentally leaned too fast towards the desk and I stabbed my eye with a metal fork. And then he'd be like, you mean straw? And I'd be like, yes, sorry, straw. And he'd go, also, that story is fucking stupid. <laughs> I really was petrified that I would be permanently blind from being too, from too excitedly sitting down to play a video game while I'm supposed to be working from home. Imagine if that was my story. Imagine if I had to tell people that. I would get no respect, dude. I would I would become the next Rodney Dangerfield. I would have to resort to that to co- type of comedy, dude. I would have to resort to I get no respect jokes exclusively, because every single person who was like, "What happened, dude? You didn't see the straw?" <laughs> That's how I felt when I leaned into it and bashed my eye. I was like, "You didn't see that shit, man. What is wrong with you?" And then I was thinking to myself, I was justifying in my head. Because what happened was since I didn't cut my eye and I didn't sever it and like all I all it did was like kind of hurt and feel like maybe was bruised for a, an hour or two for a second to I thought to myself, hey, man. I almost was that turtle. <laughs> you know, I've always been like, who gives a fuck about the plastic straws? But then I bashed myself on this metal straw and I thought, damn, dude, those turtles. Maybe people have a point. Maybe if we didn't give a fuck about that turtle, I would still have a plastic straw and I would have an eye patch on right now. Who knows? Or maybe if that never happened with the turtle, I have a straw that's not this fucking long and a straw that's not metal so I wouldn't bash my eye on it. Maybe that maybe maybe I would never I wouldn't have hit my eye at all, dude. I either would have been blinded permanently or never hit my eye at all. The world will never will never know. But what I do know is paper straws can suck a fucking asshole, dude. Paper straws can be shoved into the biggest asshole in the world and then shit out into a fucking landfill. Fuck paper straws. I went to McDonald's the other day, and there was... Imagine this, but it's a plastic cup. I'm holding a glass, okay? Of water. Imagine... You ever get a Starbucks coffee? You get a Starbucks coffee... I guess it's just anywhere. Anywhere you get a drink. If you get an iced coffee at Starbucks, it's usually in a fully plastic container, and then they they go, hey, do you want a straw? And you go, sure. And they jab a piece of, of paper... They, they jab a cylinder of paper into your fucking plastic, your fully plastic container. And they go, enjoy, we're saving the environment. You're not doing shit, dude. You're just making my drink worse. Make the entire... The, I don't get the logic, dude. It used to be that the cup was paper... And then the straw was plastic, and now the entire cup is plastic and the straw is paper, and I don't understand the purpose of doing that. I really don't understand how it helps the environment. Also, why... why, Just metal, dude. Just metal. Why don't... I, I think that... I think that people should bite the bullet. I think Starbucks should eat the fee and they should provide everyone with metal straws. That's what I think. I think they should be like, hey, you can buy a metal 
Starbucks straw, and then you can bring it back and use it all the time. That's what they should do. Either metal straws or no straws. That's what they should do. And once you buy a metal straw, you get it forever. Charge people like 10 bucks for them. Fuck it. I'd rather have you just tell me there's no straws and me sip from from the cup itself than you give me a, a damp utensil to slurp out of. Do you know what I'm saying? Why would you be like, hey, the material that gets... Hey, you know that material? You know how paper gets fucking disgusting when it's wet? You know how paper like sticks and gets brittle and falls apart immediately? It, you know how paper becomes the worst texture you've ever touched in your life once it gets wet even a little bit? Let's make a straw out of that. Yeah, dude, let's make a device that you slurp liquid through out of the material that feels the worst when you touch it and it's wet. What? This is a stupid thing to get mad about, but that's how I feel. <laughs> I don't know. It was an easy solution. I just got a metal straw, but then I stabbed my fucking eye because then I got too excited about metal straws. Anyway, I stab my eye, I bash my tooth. Next thing, it's going to go right up my urethra. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows, dude? Next time, I'm going to be having sex with a beautiful lady or maybe not a beautiful a lady. A nice lady. Doesn't matter if she's beautiful or not. I'll be having sex with a with a beautiful, beautiful human. And then I'll be like, ooh, I need some water. And then I'll just fucking lean over too quick because I'm all woozy from sex. I'm woozy and, and I'm sweaty. And I'll be like, oh, let me get some water. And then just bash my fucking eye. I'll impale my face. I'll, be, I'll start bleeding in front of her. She'll be like, oh my God. She'll have seen every liquid spill from my body that night. It'll be a, an awful experience. Um, <laughs> every liquid, I guess every liquid besides pee and maybe not every liquid, dude. I don't, I tend not to come. <laughs> maybe not liquid because uh, a lot of times, you know, I might not, you know, I might not do that in front of you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're a stranger, dude. You're a fucking stranger. I don't know you. I don't know you that well. You'll be seeing somebody and they'll think, they'll be like, dude, I know you really well. And I'm like, dude, I've eaten food with you seven times. No, you'd be like, I've seen you seven times. We've eaten a meal together three times. What are you talking about? You know me, dude. You don't know me. Damn, dude. Anyway, I'm, I don't think I'm actually mad about the straws. I think what I'm really mad about is the fact that... Uh, my rent went up and uh, uh, my, my rent went up an amount of money that seems um, impossible. Like to me, at least, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't seem impossible because we signed a piece of paper when we were signing the lease for this place. We signed a piece of paper that was like, hey, by the way, we can go way up next year if we want to. In the next lease, we can totally fuck your face if we want to. And I was thinking to myself, well, they're not going to fuck my face because why would you fuck your tenant's face? I don't think he, he's going to want to live in a place where his face gets fucked, you know? I think he'd much rather live in a place where his face is lightly kissed at the most. Um, because we got this apartment during COVID, during the time when nobody was moving to the city, where there was a mass exodus out of... Uh, the city, especially Manhattan, especially upper Manhattan. And this building, when I moved into it, was almost completely fucking empty. Like, nobody lived in this goddamn building. I, I looked at uh, apartments on every single floor. Which kind of was... point. I mean, it was... I mean, I'm glad I did it because each apartment had a slightly different vari variation to it. But for the most part, I saw the same apartment on every single floor which also but it kind of made me feel good because then I was like all right dude I don't have to be envious <laughs> I don't gotta wonder I like to know the other apartments in the apartment building every time there's a vacant uh apartment and the doors just open because someone just moved I walk right in dude I walk right in I turn every light on I walk into every single room I check out the the perimeter dude I scope out the property immediately because I want to see I, want to, I just want to get an idea of, of how we're all living our lives. 
Because you can be in an apartment building and someone's got a wildly better apartment than you right next door to you. Do you know what I'm saying? And you got no fucking clue. A guy below you is screaming at you for being too loud and yet he's living a better life. Do you know what I'm saying? And I want to have that information so that when he comes up to complain that I'm being too loud, I can say, hey, listen, fucko, your apartment's three times the size of, as mine. Why don't you give me a room down there to do my podcast in? Otherwise, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Otherwise, I live in a tiny apartment. I'm not dealing with your shit on top of it. Anyway. The rent. You're probably wondering how much they raised the rent. So we got it during COVID. And the main reason we got this apartment is because we're like, it's cheap. We can move into it right away. And uh, and it's got two bedrooms. And it's, and it's a bigger size than most apartments I've lived in in Manhattan. Like for Manhattan, it's a decent sized apartment. Especially for the price we were getting it for. The price we were getting it for was insanely cheap for this apartment. Um... But when we signed the lease, they showed what the apartment used to cost, and that seemed like an insane lie. And now I know why they wrote that amount of money, because I looked at that amount of money and I was like, there's no way they're going to raise it to that because that is astronomical. Okay, if they raised it to the price. Okay, well, let me say how much they raised it to. They raised the rent of my apartment. $800. (laughs) $800. And guess what? Guess what me and my roommate did? We went, oh, I guess we're moving, dude. And you know what? And and guess what the rest of the building is going to do? Hey, I guess we're moving. That is an astro... That is... And and put it this way. And that, that this is what I'm saying. Right now, I know why. Now I know that the, the reason why they put it so high is because if they were going to raise it to the rent that they said it used to be, it would be uh uh like twelve hundred a twelve hundred dollar increase. A twelve hundred dollar increase. A twelve hundred dollar increase. If they raised it to the supposed uh, uh previous rent. And so then that made me go, oh, okay, you were doing an insane price for what it used to be so that I, so that we thought like, well, I hope it doesn't go that high so that you can go lower than that, but still high enough for everyone to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're seeing what you can get away with and you're not going to get away with an $800 increase, dude. What are you talking about? The heat, you can't control the heat. I'm either fucking hot as shit and sweating out of every pore in my body, or I'm freezing and want to kill myself. 800 bucks is insane, dude. The sink has not stopped, has not not stopped up since the moment I moved in, dude. Drano has not prevented this sink from not flooding every time I use it. What the fuck are you talking about? 800 extra bucks for what, dude? The toilet separated from the floor the first time I shit in it. The first time I shit in this toilet, it separated from the floor and water burst out of it. And next thing I know, I ruined my towel. Next thing I know, I'm out a towel. And then it took like a week and a half, two weeks for someone to show up and fix the thing. And now it's fixed, but it still wobbles, dude. It's teetering on the edge. Every time I take a shit, every time I sit on that toilet, I have to do a fu- It's like I'm on a, on a high wire rack. It's like I'm walking between the fucking twin towers. It's like I'm French and I'm walking between the twin towers every time I sit on my toilet. I'm And it wobbles back and forth. I'm trying so hard for it not to wobble just enough for the water to start leaking out again and for me to have to pay 15 bucks on another fucking ruined towel, dude. You owe me 30 bucks, dude. I owe you 800 extra a month. You owe me towel money. When we got here, there was a nail sticking out of the ground, holes drilled in the wall. A a piece of tile just came off of the shower. 
800 bucks for what, dude? The dishwasher smelled like someone shit in it 32 times. Literally, we opened the dishwasher and the musk that came out of it made me want to fucking pass out, dude. It smelled like a dead rodent was in there. It smelled like a D a, a D washer. It smelled like you put the the dishes in there as a prank to fuck up your friends. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why a dishwasher would ever smell that way, dude. It smelled like bunk, bro. It was a smegma scented dishwasher when I opened it. Eight hundred bucks for what, dude? We tried to call about that too. Never came. There was a mouse in this apartment. 800 bucks, dude? And I don't want to shit. I mean, the super's good. Every time the super came, he was a very nice man. He, he, did the, he did the shit that he was supposed to do. He's a nice guy, dude. He's not the one who raised the rent. The fucking landlord is. And fuck his stupid face, dude. What the fuck? 800 bucks is insane. Not a single person who I've told that was like, Oh, that checks out. COVID prices. No, even with COVID prices, people are like, what's up? I'm looking at apartments right now and they still have COVID prices for certain apartments. The pandemic still exists, bro. Also, who do you think is trying to move to Manhattan? Are you guys getting a lot of feelers? I doubt it severely. They're banking on the summer being a huge, a huge uh, uh, re-entrance of people into the city. They're hoping that this summer is finally the fucking unpandemic summer everyone's been hoping for. We've had two summers so far of people being like, damn, dude, COVID's over. No, it's not. I guess we had one summer of COVID and then we had one, and then we had the first summer back and everyone was like, dude, this summer, people are going to go go wild, dude. People are going to fuck. It's going to get crazy. And it, and it was and it wasn't, dude. People got a little wild, but it wasn't... It was not it was not the romp everyone was hoping for. And I think this building is like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna get romp 2.0 this summer. No, you're not, dude. No one's coming back to Upper Manhattan. They're not. The old people left. You know what they want? They're banking on college kids. That's what they fucking want. But also the college kids are gonna fucking leave, dude. When my lease is up, that's when college kids move out. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Anyway, it's fine. I mean, I also don't like this apartment. <laughs> Have I said this on the podcast? I don't. I mean, my room is a serial killer vibe. I'm a very defiant person. Every time someone's come into this room and they've criticized that there's like no art on the wall at all, that it's just like a blank, there's just blank serial killer fucking insane asylum walls. Every time someone has said that, I go, I'm never fucking changing it. Every every apartment I go into, I live in, I'm it's going to be serial killer walls. I'm going to fuck pe- I'm going to have sex next to serial killer walls for the rest of my life just to defy people who are like you really need to decorate. Do I though? I decorate for me, dude. I think that's what it is, though. I just don't. I, I don't. I don't feel a need. I would like to decorate. It also costs money to decorate. People will say shit, and you're just like, "Oh, you got a lot of money, huh?" People will be like, "Why don't you get paintings on the wall?" And then I'll be like, "What kind of paintings do you have?" And they'll send me a link to like a two hundred dollar painting, and I'll be like, "Oh, you got a lot of money, huh? You have a lot of money, huh?" Somebody sent me a chair. I was looking to buy a chair. And somebody sent me a chair and they said, you know, with a chair, you want, you're going to have it for a long time. So you, you want to buy something that, that makes, you know, that is really sturdy and is going to last. You're going to be spending a lot of time in it. So you want a comfortable one that's good. And I'm like, that logic checks out. That makes sense. I mean, it's not quite a bed. I don't have to sit in this chair every day. I probably will. But a bed is more important, you know? And this bed was probably 1200 bucks years ago, years ago. And I really should buy another bed, but I'm not going to. But maybe I will. I don't know. But regardless, the chair, if that's a $1,200 bed, I'm thinking a chair's got to be at max 200 bucks. 
A friend of mine sent me a chair that was $500. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? I thought we were on the same level. I thought we were making the same amount of money. Why are you st- why are you telling me rich in this underhanded way? Why are you why are you very backwardsly going, I can afford better things than you? Why are you doing this? I was at an open mic with somebody, right? And when you're at all, you're like, oh, we're all in the same shitty situation. <laughs> we're all living a bad life, dude. And then this person, I see him on Instagram. And they're like touring the world. Not touring. They're just on vacation everywhere in the world right now. They're just fucking everywhere in the world on vacation. Having the coolest, sickest fucking time ever. And I'm just like, damn, dude. You you got money. I thought you had a desk job. What's going on, dude? How are you riding horses? If you're if you're riding a horse on a beach, you're better than me, dude. You're living a better life than me. We shouldn't be in the same circles. If you are riding a horse on the beach and taking a selfie, uh, taking a picture of it where the sun is coming down and you look beautiful, you we shouldn't run into each other. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Our circles should not be similar. That doesn't make sense. I'm like, oh, uh, I would love to go to London. And then I, I calculate in my head going to London. And I'm like, yeah, but then I'll, I'll, I'll not be able to do seven other things. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I divide money into meals. And every time I'm like, oh, I'll go to that place. I start to think to myself, well, then I can't eat that many more meals. I have that much less food in my stomach if I go do that thing. So let me just spend all my money on food doesn't really apply though because I'll still buy other things I'm a very impulsive buyer I'm very much like I'm a very false frugal person also frugal is a weird word frugal sounds like it means the opposite and stoic I've I've been I've been it's a lot of words that I'm like I feel like they they betray you I called someone stoic because I thought it meant like you're very elegant and beautiful and like serene. And then I looked it up and it was like a person who's been through a lot. A person who's carrying a great burden. It basically was saying like a person who's like severely fucked up, but they'll never tell you. <laughs> Which sounds much meaner than what I thought it's. I thought it, I thought it meant like statuesque, like you're a beautiful statue. And it was like, no, it means you're statuesque, like you're hardened because of hardship. And frugal, I always thought like, yo, I'm I'm fucking frugal, dude. I thought frugal was a dude who's like making it rain at a strip club. No, a fr- it's the opposite, dude. It's a guy going to Taco Bell because he wants to have his kids never have toys. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's a guy with a million dollars in the bank and he only eats Taco Bell every single day of his life. That's frugal. But anyway, I don't even know how I got here. I don't even know uh, what... Uh, oh, damn. I just went on like 17 tangents in a row. Oh, I was talking about the apartment. Too much money, dude. They raised the rent too fucking high. And the apartment sucks. So so what is that? Um, all right, I got some things that I wrote down. Sorry, I got out of place. So now I'm like, damn, what do I even, what do I even write to say? Um, I guess we could talk about that with the sex thing. I mean, this is on topic with serial killer having sex in a serial killer type room. I've said this on the podcast, right? I have the type of room where, you know, people, when people come back to it, I feel like I'm pretty, I'm charming, dude. (laughs) Damn, dude. Like I have a fucking, uh, air conditioner at the base of my bed right now that I could find room to like put somewhere else where no one can see it but instead I just leave it there because it's too much of an effort to shift things around so so people don't have to see that and I've just been having sex with someone who just can see that (laughs) who can just be like I you know 
I've been, but someone's been coming over who just has to be like, I guess he's never going to move that. <laughs> Every time they see me, they're confronted with the idea of like, do I want to fuck a guy who can't put an air conditioner away? <laughs> And and I I would understand the answer to be no. Like I would understand someone to be like, no, dude, no, I'm never coming back here again. This is insane. And before this air conditioner was here, there was a giant air conditioner in the living room, and that only recently went away. She kept coming over, and she would always comment on it. You got a this is a big ass air conditioner. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna put it away somewhere. And every time she would come in, and she'd be like, you gonna get you gonna move it? And I'm like, we'll see. <laughs> and she kept coming back. Why, dude? I don't know. Maybe maybe it's me. Maybe I do it on purpose. Sometimes I do think I do it on purpose. Sometimes I think I set myself up on purpose uh, to just see what happens. <laughs> right? Because I don't dress that crazy. I dress very plain. I got a very plain room. I think I actively am plain just to be like so you like so what's up you like me or what's going on i don't know i like when someone likes you i don't like doing other things and then people like that i don't know if that makes sense but it's that's a stupid thing i would like to i, li- I would like to wear a nice outfit <laughs> i would like to wear an outfit that makes somebody go like damn i really like you i'm glad you picked that out you really put that together what, what's wrong with that I don't got to wear such plain shit. I don't know. I sweat in someone's eye the other night. <laughs> I was thinking about... I I had sex the other night, and I was just thinking, dude, fuck, I had sex the other night. <laughs> uh, it's not a weird thing to say, but for some reason I felt weird just saying it right there. I just felt like I said it real fucking... Cunty. I said it real weird and shitty. Yo, dude, I fucked the other night, bro. I said it very bro accidentally. Um, when I just want to say it plainly. I had sexual intercourse the other night. And it pertains to the thing I want to talk about. Um, that's the timer. I'll see you guys in... Uh, I'll, I'll keep talking about this random bullshit uh, in a second. See you guys in a sec. Hello. Uh, I'm back. So, I guess the first half of this podcast is audio only, huh? <laughs> I don't know what happened, dude. The camera turned off for some reason. I don't know what happened. So, when I was saying, uh, you saw me bash my tooth on the straw, you didn't see shit, dude. Nobody saw shit. I made that up completely. Made it up entirely. <laughs> you didn't see anything, dude. You just saw, You just see me now being a fucking dumb fuck. Who didn't know that the camera was off. That's cool, dude. That's cool not knowing the camera's off for a full half hour of talking into one. That's tight, dude. Anyway, my rent is too high is what I said. You heard what I said. You just didn't see it. It's okay, dude. You know, podcasts are, don't need to be a visual medium. I'm just uh, doing more than I need to. <laughs> um, anyway, if you like the visuals, I, I apologize. Um, I fucked up, dude. What can I do? I fucked up. But, uh, I was talking about sex. Um, I had sex the other day. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> no, but, um, I, uh, I sweat. I, I, the other day when I was having sex, I was, I've been really realizing lately, and maybe it's because I'm in such a fucking hot apartment, but when I was growing up, I sweat a lot, dude. I've always been a person who sweat a lot, and I never knew if I actually sweat a lot or if I just sweat more than my brothers, and that's enough to, to forever think you sweat a lot. Because when you're growing up with two brothers, they will find anything to set you apart and, and fucking annihilate you with. Um, my brother got crazy acne, but he was the oldest. So we, I we barely like hit him with that shot. 
because we just never thought to do it. It was too mean. Also, my brother, my brother was a mean guy. My brother was is the oldest of us. I feel like I've talked about some of this before, but he he would say vicious things to us, and for whatever reason, just because I guess he's older than me, I just, and he like had some sort of. Uh, you know, there's some sort of automatic power you feel that an older sibling has over you, and it made me not factor in th- ways I could hit him back. And one of those things was, I mean, for a long time when you're younger, you're like, oh, this guy's bigger than me. I can't physically defy him. Also, you're like, I can't ver- verbally defy him because he'll also, because then he could physically defy me. There's a, there's a, there's a long period where older siblings just dominate the playing field. And then there, there, th- then there becomes a time where the older sibling, well, you, you start getting bigger and bigger. And then you start to notice that your older sibling is realizing that you're getting bigger and bigger. It's very similar to your parents. If, if you have parents that hit you, uh, and my parents didn't, I mean, my, my mom hit us out of, uh, desperation. My mom like s- spanked us when we were getting real crazy. Uh, and my dad never hit us, but he just scared the fuck out of us. I've talked about this on the podcast. My dad would act like he was going to hit us, uh, and we would just be paralyzed in fear. <laughs> and that was enough uh, f- of a punishment, I, I guess he felt. My dad would like come up real close, and and the, the energy he gave towards us was like he was going to fucking give us a black eye but really he would just like lightly kick us on the ass and the his anger made it feel like he was hitting us with more force than he did um so what was i even talking about how did i get on this i was just trying to talk about sex oh i sweat a lot yeah my brother had and my bro- brother had really bad acne and i used to like he used to always make fun of me for fucking sweating constantly He'd be like, yo, Jake's sweating. Of course he's sweating. He's always sweating. Ew, you sweat so much. Didn't have to be clever, dude. When you're a kid, when you're a child, doesn't have to be clever. Clever. It just has to be correct. <laughs> you, that's Insults in general, they don't have to be clever. They just have to be exactly what the person is worried you're going to say. That's it. That's, a, that's, that's the masterful insult. Even in college... Uh, what's his name? I think Louie has the bit about, he's got a bit about, uh, what is it? It's about kids, kids will say mean shit. Kids are like, kids, kids are clever. They'll come up with some mean shit. And he goes, sir, what's your name? What's your name? John? Uh, yeah. So a kid would be like, yo, John, you fucking piece of shit. Stupid fuck. You fucking dumb fat fuck. Making fun of the fact that kids aren't actually that clever; they just say mean shit. But uh, it's it's forever. It's 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 as you're an adult too. People on uh, the Discord that I'm on, me and my friends are on this Discord, and we were talking about uh, like kids in our college, and multiple people had pirate kids at their college, <laughs> which was a kid who dresses a pirate, so everyone just referred to him as pirate kid. One of them even said, oh, yeah, there was one kid at our college. We called him the kid who dresses like a pirate. <laughs> they didn't even abbreviate it. They weren't even clever enough to abbreviate it to pirate kid. They're like, the kid who dresses like a pirate often was his full name that we called him. That's how unclever people are with their fucking shitty observations. And their permanent nicknames. I told you guys about this moist kid, bro. This kid came in from the rain when he, and his hair was wet in track in high school he was a freshman and my friend goes yo you look wet yo why are you all wet what up moist kid you're all moist what up moist kid and that was his name forever dude that might be still his name to to this day i don't know i don't know if he's happy about that or resents it I called somebody T-Whip in high school and he was very pissed off at me and he hated me for it. And now I ran into him and his buddies and he was like, remember, yo, what's up, man? Remember you called me T-Whip? And it was like a funny joke that they brought up. Meanwhile, I was living with the guilt of hurting this kid's feelings. (laughs) I felt bad for a while. I was like, I should have said that, dude. Why was I so mean to a stranger? And then I run into him and he's like, hey, man, this is an inside joke between me and my friends. Can I buy you a drink? And I'm like, damn, dude, what the fuck did I feel so guilty for? 
you don't you never know when you're going to traumatize a person or give them a laugh for the rest of their life. You never know, dude. It's a fine line. That's why they say fucking comedy's a risk, dude. It's a fine line. Um I'm sure other people I talked about this the other week. I'm sure other people the woman the girl who I called corpulent and pretended it was a compliment, I don't I don't know. She either doesn't remember it, is traumatized by it, or think it's, thinks it's funny. It's one of the three. Anyway, I sweat a lot is what I'm talking about. Um, And my brother just would make fun of me for being like sweating, and then he would also call me fat. And one day I just looked at him, and I forget what he was saying to me. He was, I think I was in... I think I was in eighth grade or something like that. I was like old enough, um, but still young enough for him to still be fucking hitting me with insult after insult after insult uh, and think that I'm not going to do anything. But I think it was old enough where my brother, if I did go back at him, he had to decide what he was going to do. And I, so I guess if I was eighth grade, he was eighth, Ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. No, I must have been in sixth grade. I was in like sixth grade. And he must have been like a senior or a junior or some shit. Could have been earlier. I don't know. But me and my brother are five years apart. And he said to me, uh, I forget I forget the specific scenario, but he was calling me fat. He was saying something. And I remember staring at him, grilling him, getting so mad, just looking at the pimples on his face and being like, I don't. And, and like really fixating on them and be like, I don't say anything about this. I don't say anything about this. I've never said anything about this. And you're, you're calling me fat. You're being fucking so shitty to me. And it just bubbled and bubbled and bubbled inside me until I finally looked at him and I was just like, oh yeah, well you, you, you have pimples. (laughs) Again, not clever, not smart, but I just said the simple cold fact. I said, yo, you have pimples, dude. You have gross pimples. And he looked at me and he went silent and I could see he got angry. And then he, I don't think he ever called me fat again. (laughs) That's all it took, dude. He looked at me and he was probably like, he's a little too big. He might be able to take me now. And also he just cut me to my core, dude. I don't want to be called pimples. I don't want him to bring up my imperfections. So you know what? I'm I'm done. <laughs> I don't know if he was aware of that thought process, but that had to have been the thought process in his brain. I, I, I didn't like... I wonder if he had an epiphany in that moment of like, oh shit, this feels bad. Is this what I've been doing to you this whole time? I'm going to stop. Anyway, but I sweat a lot and I do. Uh, But recently I've been, I've been reconnected with the thought of like, oh, I sweat a shit ton. And um, part of the reason is because this is the first apartment where the heat is out of control. I've talked about this already. I had the air conditioner on when it was still not quite cold enough. I mean, now it's like 10 degrees most days, so the air, the heat is greatly appreciated. But when it was like 40 degrees out, the heat was murdering my soul. I had to have the air conditioner on. You guys know this if you listen to the pod. Cast. Um, I'm not going to say pod like a fuckface, although I have said it before. But I don't feel like saying it in this moment. Anyway, uh, and because it's so hot, I think it really does make me sweat more than I already do, and I do a lot. And so um, a couple of times I've been with this person and I'm lying in bed and I move my head and I just see a sweat stain. <laughs> I just see like a puddle of wet. Uh, I see a I see a wet spot that isn't sexual, you know? I see a wet spot that does that turns no one on. Um And it made me think to myself because I've never been bothered by a woman uh, on her period. And I've always wondered, like, I wonder why I don't care. Because I, I don't. I like I, I oftentimes you just turn the light off. Like, I, that's something that you think you're going to care about because you're like, ew, it's a person bleeding. But then when you have sex for the first time uh, and when you start dating someone who has a period, you're just like, I don't I don't give a fuck. 
I don't know. Also, the first time I had sex with somebody on their period, we didn't know she, like, well, I didn't know she was on it. She also said she didn't know, but I guess she probably knew. But uh, she was on it, and we had sex. Also, well, I don't know. Well, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't have a problem having sex with someone on their period. Uh, but also, I'm realizing I had a, I, I had a, I had a, I had a very bloody loss of virginity. Like, between me and the other person, she bled a lot when we had sex for the first time. And then also, like, she subs, like, for a, for a minute, she was bleeding. And so a lot of times when we were trying to have sex in the beginning, there was a lot of... <laughs> there was a lot of red to have to interact with. So maybe that also made me just not give a fuck. I don't know. I just don't think it's a big deal. And part of it, I think, is realizing how much I sweat is that, like, I, like, when I'm having sex, we should put a towel down regardless, you know? <laughs> like, like I said, there's going, there's going to be a wet spot that someone is uncomfortable with. The same way I, I look at the wet spot from my sweat and I go, ew, dude. She's probably looking at her, at the wet spot from her period being like, ew, dude. And in the reality, I'm going like, nah, dude, mine is worse. Honestly, I think me, the, the amount I sweat is, is much more. It's more fluid, dude. <laughs> it's more to deal with. I sweat a lot. I fucking, I fucking, uh, dude, I sweat a good amount. Dude, I sweat. <laughs> Uh, dude, I was talking to somebody about, um, uh, or sometimes you'll have a conversation with people about sex and it's always start startling when you talk to somebody who's like come in somebody's face. It's always very upsetting. I don't know why it's very upsetting. I feel like we see it in porn a lot, but it's not in real life. When a friend of yours is like, yeah, I've come in someone's face. You're like, I don't even know you, dude. We're not even that close anymore. That's a weird thing to do. I met your girlfriend. Did you do that to her? She's a nice lady. <laughs> Did she ask for that? I feel like if a woman has had come, has had a man come in her face, I hope that she requested it. That's all. That's all I'm saying. It bums me out to, to, to the thought of a guy being like, yo, let me fucking come in your face. <laughs> She's so aggressive, dude. Calm down, bro. Movies don't have to be reality, bro. Just watch the internet. Anyway, it's never been a thing that I've thought to do, uh, but in, in, uh, you know, but the, the thing, the rumor is, or the, the rumor, the, th the thing is when cum gets it in someone's eye, the, their eye gets all red and it's very unpleasant. And, uh, I have always been like, well, oh, I'm glad I've never had someone experience that. You know, I've never, I, I don't really want to come in someone's face. And also the fact that I haven't, I've never, you know accidentally got in someone's eye and had them be irritated eye wise <laughs> but i sweat so much that the other night i was having sex with somebody a missionary dude like a fucking hero bro <laughs> i was having sex missionary style the best style dude because we're making love dude we're not fucking we're making love we're creating something together dude we're not fucking each other <laughs> No, I was having sex and um, and I was above the person and just in the middle of it, I was sweating and sweat was dripping down my face and a bead of sweat dropped down and hit her in the eye. And she stopped and went, ah, ow, ah, as if I did come in her face. <laughs> Like she, she stopped so abruptly and, and f covered her eyes so quickly and reacted so irritated by it that I swear to God for a split second in her head, she was like, did he come in my eye? Did he, how did he fucking, isn't he inside of me right now? What the fuck just happened? But no, dude. And then in that moment, I was like, what's worse? <laughs> In that moment, I was like, would I have preferred? Would it have been better? What's more upsetting? What would you rather have? Come in your eye or sweat in your eye? Comment. Vote in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> what?
Which burns more? I really thought about that. I started having an existential crisis. I was like, which burns more? Should I come in people's eyes? Should I come in people's eyes to avoid sweating in their eyes? What should I do? I don't want to sweat in people's eyes. This is aggressive. I don't like this. This is the exact reaction. I was glad that I never gave anybody. And now it's happening. <laughs> um, so, yeah, dude. I, uh... Sweat is a form of cum, is it not? <laughs> I guess they're both acidic. Yeah, so I got serial killer walls. That's it. That's the whole story. I I, I, I sweat in somebody's eye and, I, and I, uh, I, I felt bad about it. But what are you going to do, dude? I sweat a lot. I got to put that towel on. I should really wrap my head in a towel. That's what I should do. You know how a woman wraps their hair in a towel after they take a shower? I should do that while I'm having sex. Also, I need to drink more water, dude. I sweat so much. Also, I need to calm down. I thought of a lot of things. I was like, why am I sweating so much? And I'm like, because I'm moving a lot. Why am I moving so much during sex? And the person's always like, well, I like it. You're like putting an effort in. And I'm like, yeah, but it's too much, dude. I don't drink enough water to be putting out this much energy. I also don't work out enough to be working out this hard sexually. <laughs> I need to start going for runs if I want to if I want to perform like this. This is too much. I'm like almost passing out while I'm fucking. That's a bad life to live, dude. I got lightheaded the other night. That's not good, dude. I need to go for a walk. Anyway, I'm sweaty right now. Hillary Duff is jacked. I wrote that down. <laughs> Sorry, um, I, I just, you know, I was coming out of that story thinking about like, what else was I trying to talk about? I don't even know where I am right now. I don't even know what's happening. I hope the camera's fucking working. Let me check the camera. It is. It's working. Thank God, dude. You'll be at least be able to watch this part of the podcast. Um, Hillary Duff is jacked. Has Has anyone watched uh, How I uh, How I Met Your Father yet? No, exactly, dude. Exactly. The only person I know who who watched it is my roommate, and it's a mistake, dude. Don't watch that show. <laughs> no, you can watch that show. I mean, I'm sure it's bad. It might not be, but I'm sure it's terrible. The only thing I know about that show is I saw the trailer and I saw Hillary Duff and I was like, dude, she's so fucking jacked. Why is she so jacked? I've never seen a woman with more defined arms. She looks good, dude. I'm not saying she looks bad. I think she looks good. She looks very good. I'm like, dude, she's a 35-year-old jacked lady. I'm attracted to her. Why is she not finding l the love of her life? Also, why, why? I don't know. They should have called the show How I Met Your Father or Mother. Why didn't they call the show How I Met My Partner? And then you don't know if it's a man or a woman, and she's bi, and she fucks everybody, dude. It's 2022. How I Met Your Partner is the way to go. How I Met Your Parent. Boom, dude. Come on, man. Put me in the writer's room, dude. I'll kill it for you. I'll write down Hillary Duff, jacked as fuck, hot as hell, Lizzie McGuire. This is Lizzie McGuire for the kids who've now grown up. And she and she and <laughs> and she fucks ladies and men, and we don't know who she ends up with. And it's a ripoff parody of that show where they wore uh, the uh, Chinese outfits that one episode. <laughs> it's a ripoff of that show that was kind of weird and racist that that doesn't hold up that much. It's a it's a ripoff of that show, dude. No, not Friends. The other one. How I yeah, how I met yeah, the one yeah. Neil Patrick Harris plays a womanizer. Yeah, that one. That's like a lost episode. There's an episode where they all dress in a I don't know. I don't I didn't watch the episode. I just know that they got in trouble. They got in trouble for an Asian episode, an episode where they were uh culture appropriating Asian culture. And uh I like to shit on the show for it, but for no real reason. I don't know. I don't have any connection to the show. I mean, I like the, some of the actors in the show. I think Jason Siegel's great. So I don't really even know why I'm shit on the show. I apologize. <laughs> 
I have no strong connection to this show and, and, it, and its sins. I don't even know about them. It was just fun to say in the moment. But How I Met Your Father, I don't know. Get I guess watch it. Why not? Who gives a, I, who gives a fuck? Girl Meets World. Whatever, dude. Just make new shows, you know? I just don't get who these shows are for. Like, like a lot of TV, I feel like, is made for no one. Like, on purpose. There's so many shows that exist who you're like, who's watching this show still? I mean, I've worked on shows where I'm like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> who's watching this? Like, they still make cop shows. They still make shows where it's like, dude, the rookie, a rookie. You don't even understand what crime is. Yeah, I just got here, dude. It's my first day on the job. No shit, I don't understand it. Brooklyn Nine-Nine was... Brooklyn Nine-Nine should be the last cop show, right? It's a, it's a, it was a, I mean, I didn't watch it, but I heard it was funny. <laughs> I don't know. I just think there's been enough cop TV shows, don't you think? I don't know. I don't like TV as TV. I offended somebody by saying that, but it is what it is, man. I don't like, I don't like TV shows that are just, and it's just me. I don't like them. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why CSI type shows are still made. Like is CSI still running? Do they still do new episodes of law and order? If so, why? That's all I'm saying. I guess cause there's a kid in high school somewhere. I guess that's why. But he's watching YouTube. That's the thing. All these things, all these, all these shows that were like perpetual reruns. They were just something to watch, at 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 noon on a Saturday because he didn't have school. Like I watched so much fucking Law and Order because it was the only thing on in the middle of the day during the summer. But now you have YouTube, so you're fucking watching PewDiePie, bro. You're watching somebody else. You're not. Little girls are watching James Charles do makeup. They're not watching Special Victims Unit. <laughs> They got other shit to do, bro. They're watching a whole different kind of predator. <laughs> They're not watching fictional fucking child molesters. They're watching real live ones teaching them how to do makeup. Come on, dude. <laughs> I love Special Victims Unit. That's what I said when I was a kid. Now kids are like, I love that actual predator who has a YouTube channel. <laughs> I love that maker of victims YouTuber. He's great. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. I, uh, <laughs> um, this person I'm, I've been, uh, I was talking to somebody, I was talking to somebody who, I was talking to somebody who uh, I've been intimate with, and um, I said, uh, I realized that the people I see, because I give a lot of compliments, uh, because I like to do that. I th I love giving a compliment that I can mean, uh, that I actually believe because I feel like a lot of people give false compliments. And so if you have an opportunity to say a compliment that you believe, it's it feels good to say it. Because what the person can tell that you mean it and that and and they it's fun to see somebody receive a compliment that you mean because they can feel it and you watch them get happy and feel good and it's nice. I've said that before on the podcast that it it's fun to give a compliment that you mean. Anyway, being a redundant fuck. But so, but I've realized that like I give a lot of compliments, but people who I see don't give me that many people, people give me compliments, but people who I tend to see, they don't give me many physical compliments. And I was telling someone who I've been intimate with that I was like, yeah, well, a lot of people who I'm, who I have sex with or who I'm with sexually, like they don't give me many physical compliments. And she just looked at me and I was like. Uh, I was like, are you all right? Cause she just looked at me like horrified. I was like, yeah, is everything okay? She's like, yeah, no, no. I'm just, that's really sad. And then I was like, oh yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess so. I don't know. Yeah. 
She's like, no, like why? Why don't they? I go, I, I don't know. That just ha- hasn't happened that much. I was just thinking about it. She's like, yeah, that's really sad. And then she just was dead silent. <laughs> and I was like, well, now it's sadder. <laughs> now it's. You could have. You could have. This is the moment, dude. This is the moment when you just go like, well, you, well I think you're. That's crazy. That's. This is the moment where you go, well, that's crazy because I think you're very handsome. Like, say something, dude. And I didn't realize I was fishing, but I guess I was. I was I was like, hey, man, why don't you? This person also, they were like, what would you like? Like, what what can I do? What would you what do you, would you like sexually? I was like, I would like if you like took off my clothes more. And then she was like, oh, yeah, I could do that. And then since then, never. She hasn't taken my clothes off once, dude. I just I just got all these fucked up sweaters now. <laughs> I just got hella fucked up sweaters, dude. You know what I'm talking about. When you have sex with somebody and and you're very enamored and you're taking all their clothes off and you're fucking and next thing you know you're like, "Oh shit, I should probably take my clothes off cuz they're naked and I'm not." And then the next day you pick up your shirt and it's covered in gunk, dude. And you're like, "Damn it, why couldn't she just be as aroused as me, dude?" <laughs> Why couldn't she just be as into ripping my clothes off as I was to her? Because now she's got clean clothes and I got to go do a bundle in the wash, bro. I got to fucking do a laundry load. I got to get this load out by doing a load of laundry. Anyway, that's too on the nose. But that's the timer. Thank God the camera worked for the second half of the podcast. Hope it's not out right now. Uh, Yeah, this was fun. Uh, Hope you enjoy the first half. Even though you just have to listen to it, whatever. Thank you for listening. If you're listening to the end right now, you're fucking out of your mind, but I love you. Uh, Yeah. Anyone who listened, thank you so much. You're awesome. I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Jake, you're an idiot. Jake, you don't make any sense. Jake, you're a piece of shit A piece of shit